but I do hopefully think it's going to slowly bring down issues with um, these dark patterns that exist on other social media platforms that create this really depressive <laughs> like environment yeah. that um, people suffer from anxiety and depression and all these other things that exist out there mm -hmm. because they're so caught up on the number of followers instead of like the actual social value that you're yeah. supposed to be getting out of social networking. Hi, welcome to the brew. I'm your host Walter Zalamaki. Today I'm joined with Luis, and uh, we'll, we'll see Which where this conversation will be yeah. going to today. But we're gonna be talking about two topics. One will be Clubhouse um, and the future of social media tied into that. Um, and then the other thing we'll be talking about is gonna be Amazon, as there's a lot of conversations going about Amazon as well. Uh, and if you don't know everything that's going on in Atlanta, Georgia, definitely. Uh, check that out because it's going to change a lot of things when it comes to labor laws and, and labor unions and all these things we've talked about in the past. But getting into it, uh, we're going to be talking about Clubhouse. Uh, and uh, I'm just going to have to start by saying that I do have an Android. And uh, I'm just going to get that out there so Luis doesn't have as much uh, ammunition against me as we uh, discussed. You, uh, yeah, you're, you're putting it out there, so you give, you're giving me less leverage to really Correct. just you know, rag You know the Eminem rap battle of Apple yeah, Cars? Yeah, 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 I'm, yeah. I'm trying to pull that off right okay. here. So that right. You, you, can't, you can't. I'm going to diss myself all the way through so you just don't have any ammunition. But uh, Clubhouse came out. Um, it took the world by storm. It went viral really, really quickly. And now so many people are using it. And I think for those that don't know what Clubhouse is, is it's taking the idea of social media and actually making it social media, meaning it's it's taking the aspect of us having conversations in a social network and actually being able to have these conversations with people you might never be able to talk with. Uh, for example, like Elon Musk is on there. You have Tony Hawk on there. You have mm -hmm. very high profile individuals in the real world you probably never get a chance to talk with, but you can join a room, right? And listen to them talk, ask, like, ask some questions from them. Um, but I'm curious to have your impressions about Clubhouse first before I talk about my perception of it, because of course you actually have an iOS device, so you can use it. Yeah, I do. I have what is, <laughs> what is, I think the superior, not necessarily mobile OS, but just like a mobile whole thing because mm. it, it, it's all interconnected. That's that's neither here nor there. I can I, I can bag on you on why you have an Android for until the cows come home. Um, yeah, I mean, I so here's the thing. I think I, I see both sides of Clubhouse. Um, I think it's really cool in this in, for what you brought up. Yep. The fact that I can be in a room with, like you said, like Elon Musk, or even um, like when Mark Zuckerberg recently was on there. Um, which I mean, shout out to the Zuck, I guess. But like. <laughs> You know, he, he was on there uh, along with a few other CEOs of really high profile tech companies. Yep. Um, you know, that's cool that you can be on there and you can just hear them talk. Um, the fact that if you can, if you can get into rooms that are small enough or if you can just like have the courage, I guess, to just like keep like asking to mm -hmm. be a speaker and then eventually you can ask some stuff. Uh, the fact that you can get your question answered directly from someone who maybe is an expert in that. I think that's really cool. I think that, um, just having a conversation with somebody is pretty neat. I mean, I, that's kind of what we're doing here, but the yeah. only difference I guess is, uh, where, where all, there's like no real crowd. Like mm -hmm. the, the crowd is, um, on Twitch, which can, you know, they can comment and stuff like that, but they can't just like actually come to be a part of this conversation that we're having. Yeah. So I think that's like the biggest draw to clubhouse is that kind of thing. Um, the other side that's happening though is like, and, and it's, it's happening now that more and more people are starting to get invites to Clubhouse, um, which is funny. Like the idea of like this like weird when it was like super exclusive when like we're talking like maybe like half a million users were on it. That's what I think that was like golden Clubhouse when yeah. it was just like nothing but people helping people out because everyone was so new. They didn't. No one was really an influencer. No one really had a following yet. That was really fun. Mm. And like, I don't like, obviously it kind of sounds like a, a bit like showboating. Like, yeah, I was there like at the very, I, I was able to invite yeah, people. Yeah, I, I was, yeah, you know, I, I was, I was in Clubhouse pretty early on. So it's whatever. Um, no, but it's, you know, I, I was there fairly early on when like the biggest room you would see um, would be like 500 people. Yeah. Like, and that's like, you would see them go, oh my gosh, it's crazy. Like that many people are in one room. Typically you'd see like a hundred maybe. Mm. Um, if you had a 500 room, it'd be because someone famous was in there or a part of it uh, or like a really big influencer. Um, but now like you had with like the Mark Zuckerberg one that happened, that's like the biggest one that you had, they had not, they had like multiple rooms that were all to capacity. And I think it was like, I think the capacity is like 3000 or 8,000, something like that. People it's like, I think it's like 3000, but it's like, um, 
in there in like different rooms. So now it's just like a, a, a metric buttload of people are yeah. a part of Clubhouse. Um, and what's happening is a thing that's happening with what's Instagram turning into now, which is just like a bunch of people telling you to like get into like Forex trading <laughs> and like being, you know, t- telling you to, to do uh, to like uh, trade crypto. And this is how you should trade crypto. Follow my like daily, uh, my day trading uh, list all that stuff that's what's starting to come into their uh, into like the the fray now which is it's everywhere yeah. so like my my fear though is that like if you're someone who's new to clubhouse and, you're, and the algorithm just like pumps shit towards you you're gonna get these like forex traders who mm-hmm. are like telling you how you can make like ten thousand dollars in a week um and, and that's ten thousand dollars in a week well not just that <laughs> like that's obviously worst case scenario if someone actually falls for it um but i think that that makes clubhouse look really bad when yeah. like that's like the forefront of their stuff when you have all these like you know i mean quote unquote influencers mm. um just like you know telling you to trade crypto trade forex trade day trade stocks or whatever it is penny stocks um and that's kind of what it's leaning into so i think that um what it is is really cool mm-hmm. but they have to fix their algorithm because right now it's it's pushing a lot of that stuff forward uh, obviously you can follow certain um groups that will kind of push the stuff that you want more so like I follow a lot of like, you know, uh, marketing, a lot of data. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I also follow like mindfulness and stuff like that. But like, you know, there's a lot of cool things you can do. A lot of groups you can be a part of. Um, I think Clubhouse is rad. Uh, but do I think that Clubhouse is going to be the clubhouse that stays for the next like two years? No, I think that someone's going to make a better version of it. Yep. And uh, they're probably just going to end up buying Clubhouse. So. Yeah. I mean, the reality is, is usually first movers in a market fail. Mm-hmm. Um, the the founders of Clubhouse, though, they failed on multiple ventures before. This was actually their first successful venture, and it's, it's pretty inspiring to hear their story and how they actually made it work. Yeah, it's red. And it's, it's cool to ma- how they made it like this exclusive feeling and had these high-profile individuals first. You know, it's it's uh, complete free speech. You can have any conversations you want to have on there. Um, it, it's a fascinating concept, and I, the reason why I really like it is because uh, we're now in an information age where uh, f- that we talked about in the past, like, you know, formal education, it has its own pitfalls because it's not moving as fast as the markets are. Uh, there's other individuals that are out, uh, uh, like other opportunities out there, like boot camps, all these things. But what if you actually get to hear from somebody who is like a CMO of a company and they're giving you advice on, you know, marketing tips or, you know, actual market applications. And you can get this information when you didn't in the past. And there's no more direct barriers on your own income disparity or your demographic groups. You can access this information mm-hmm. as long as you, well, I guess they, the disparity is you have to have an iOS device. But, uh, well, until what is it, like May, May, May something? Mid May. Mid May. Anybody can access it. Um, so God I, have I, mercy on <laughs> fucking Clubhouse when all the Android <laughs> users can get on, dude. Just <laughs> shitty microphones as far as the eye can see. <laughs> Okay. All right. Um, but yeah, so I mean the, the biggest the biggest thing there for me is like like I said, you can you can get access to information very, very quickly and efficiently. And I think the important part is it's taken the world of podcasting, which has become oversaturated, and made it in a forum where people can have those open conversations. Like the legitimate reason for a podcast is for open conversations, talking about things that you might not talk about in everyday aspect, um, but from people that have understanding of it and it can actually influence and teach you about it yeah but that does go into the bad realms of misinformation or these different realms but you can easily go that route yeah. same thing with tiktok same thing Anything, with google yeah. same thing with youtube like youtube easily if you're watching the wrong videos you're gonna go through this rabbit hole and uh yeah man it goes it, i mean I, I i've been watching the uh, have you watched the um the document well it's not documentary but the series on uh hbo max for like the QAnon a movement no i i haven't started yet oh man it is is it good fantastic there's yeah, yeah. four out of the six episodes already out and i watched all four of them and it will scare you quite a bit on like exactly what we're how people about. get radicalized how yeah. they get radicalized how yeah. you get pulled into um, is that vox that did that or who, who did that uh it was i'm not sure but it's hbo's own uh like okay. they have the rights to it but um that's the stuff i'm worried about when it comes to things like clubhouse uh overall right it's like you can create a group Obviously, they use 8chan for a reason because that's not going to get shut down and they found ways around it. Um, But that does scare me a little bit, right? When you can have, I mean, free speech should be free speech and it's important because the Mm -hmm. more ideas are out there, you at least know what exists and you can fight against them and have conversations and see if somebody believes you or doesn't believe you. But I think Clubhouse can also cause the same problem as long as they have to like look at their algorithms, monitor it. Um, make sure that there's not a lot of hate speech and stuff like that that's on this platform. It's still, you know, it's um, positive information. It's actually benefiting people and benefiting society. 
that's what I think is going to create infrastructure for success yeah. for a platform. Um, but I do think that YouTube is actively working on a solution for it. You have Twitter working I mean, on it, Instagram working on something, it, right? So, so I could see Twitter being the dominant one because they already kind of have that forum. Mm -hmm. um, and I know they had way in the past, they did have a platform kind of like this. It just never worked. Uh, they just didn't know how to scale it out. Uh, but I think now they can leverage Clubhouse. This thing is there's so many Twitter users already. It's pretty easy for them to build out uh, yeah. a platform. That they're they're already that. launching theirs. They, so certain people already have it accessible to them. Mm -hmm. um, so they can do it again. We're like, you can, I, gosh dang, I forget what they call theirs. Um, but it, it literally is the same thing as Clubhouse. Um, the little rooms that you can go in yep. and just have conversations and listen, listen to that stuff. Um, I think I think you bring up a good point here. The tricky part with Clubhouse is like with Twitter, with Facebook, um, obviously, you know, anything that has like text based information sharing mm -hmm. is fairly simple to um, to moderate because you could just create an algorithm that scans for certain words and scans for certain sentiment analysis and yep. then just takes it out, takes out that post or or tags that uh, user bad, yeah. or something like that, you know, Um how does that moderation occur when you have free flowing conversation? Mm -hmm. It's it's a lot harder. Like you know, I'm sure that there's going to be like, it, had Clubhouse been openly accessible during like bef like in the lead up to the twenty uh, the 2020 election, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, pushing closer towards the insurrection that happened on on January sixth, um, would Clubhouse have been a a, a tool utilized? for like, you know, whatever the hell, you know, mm -hmm. insert whatever theory you want here. And like, how on earth would you moderate that? I, I think, I think Clubhouse is cool. It's novel, but you got it. Like, this is what you got to kind of think about. It's like, you got to think about how moderation is going to be happening. Um, cause it's limited right now. And they yep. did it on for, for a reason. It's, it's limited. People can get into it right now. It's invite only. I don't know what it's going to be like when Android gets it, but at that point you just got to open it up. I feel like if you're mm -hmm. Clubhouse, like, why are you going to make it invite only if, now anybody and everybody can be a part of it. And I, I don't know, obviously they, they have their own kind of agenda they have there, but um, I'm interested to see where they're going to be in like a year or two. I think that, um, I think it's still going to be around, but I think that if they really have to focus on like uh, being able to have like moderators, um, having even like a reporting system for users that makes, that's like uh, kind of like how I'm trying to think about, you ever, so you know like warzone like mm -hmm. call of duty how like you can report somebody and they'll like literally email you and like tell you like hey the person you reported got banned <laughs> like 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 yeah. they like that would be cool to see um i know that uh i believe twitter also has it so like mm -hmm. if you can if you report a post it'll tell you like hey the, the post you reported got got deleted mm -hmm. um you know something like that where it's like self-moderation um but with still a bit of like human analysis behind it yeah um, I think is kind of the way they have to go. I honestly haven't looked in, I've never had a reason to look at, to report somebody or like go into the kind of nitty gritty of that stuff on clubhouse. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it's already kind of there. Uh, but I think that it needs to be robust by the time they, by the time may mid may comes around. Yeah. Like, like I, I, I really do believe that, uh, verbal communication is the future of social media because if, if people are already going that way. Like they're already posting, you know, stories, Instagram stories, all kinds of things. And you can actually then have a direct, conversation with people but i do think clubhouse and any platform is gonna have to figure out yeah consistent moderation because this is not like um it's different for like we're making a an episode on twitch and twitch has their own moderation and stuff like that they, mm -hmm. they're very strict on um but then let's say we post on youtube they also have a very good moderation system that they do on and then if we post it on like simple cast and pa pass it out to you know spotify and stuff they also have a really good moderation but if you're talking in real time and that's it I, I just I just think that's gonna have a lot of interesting repercussions to it, and the bigger you get, the more kind of dark side of any social platform exists. Yeah, uh, which I think will will start scaling out. But on the positive lens, I, I do think it's gonna be fascinating to see how it creates new strategies for social media, like strategies, right? I, I think it's gonna be very fascinating how businesses utilize it because the businesses that figured out TikTok killed killing it. it. Yeah. They're killing it right now. Um, so I do want to see how businesses start using it because I do think there's a lot of cool avenues that they can do. For example, just, um, you know, CEO chats and stuff like that. It's very easy to do. They're already doing these conversations. Just have fireside chats with other businesses. Yeah, I think if you're selling a product and you're not and, and you have access to Clubhouse and you're not on Clubhouse asking for feedback for mm -hmm. your product, 
Like, why the hell not? Like, that's mm-hmm. what I'd be doing. If I was selling a product, I'd be 100%. Just be like, hey, you know, like, you just put it on Twitter or something like that. Like, hey, you know, we're, we're hosting an open forum on Clubhouse. If you have an invite, here's a link. Um, come and give us feedback on the thing. And, like, even when you're in there, just be like, hey, I'm here's a code that you can use, like, right now for this time. Like, if you do not have the product, here's, like, a 10% off so you can buy the product. Mm-hmm. And, I don't know, like, Clubhouse 10 or some BS code. <laughs> um, and then as soon as the Clubhouse ends, you end that discount code. Mm-hmm. And, like, stuff like that I think would be fantastic if you if you have a product. It's a little bit trickier if you're um, kind of like us where we're just, like, a consultancy and an agency where our product is our service. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think if you have a product, you can for sure leverage Clubhouse in, like, a really substantial way. Yep. And I have not seen it. So, like, it's do it. Like, if you're – if anything, if you're selling soap, if you're selling T-shirts, if you're selling water bottles, you're selling anything, go on Clubhouse and just ask for feedback from people who already have your product, people who follow you, so you can have direct conversations with those people. Like, that's – that to me is really rad. Like that, that's a thing that I haven't seen yet. And, and I think that can be leveraged really, really effectively mm-hmm. is like if someone, like if I bought something, like for example, like if what's something that I, that I bought recently that I'm really jazzed about, I'm trying to think here. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know what, what I, I'm trying to, I was the last thing I ever purchased in my whole life. Um, I don't know. Like let's, let's say I got this cool t-shirt from like this, like small supplier in like San Bernardino, right? Yeah. He makes like custom like Sacombi Lake t-shirts, which are rad. Um, and he had like a clubhouse thing. I would love to just be on there and be like, hey man, love the design. Fantastic. Your shirts are really itchy. <laughs> just get better, <laughs> just get better shirts. Yeah. That's I love I'll buy another one. I'll buy one more and I'll and I'll have both shirts, but just get a less itchy shirt. Like e- even like something like that, you know, um, would be cool. And I, I think that Clubhouse can get leveraged really effectively for something mm. like that. No, I think that's fascinating because one other part when it comes to the startup world is customer discovery. So like let's say you have a startup idea. And I, I do think this is where um, any aspiring entrepreneurs or even if you're trying to like figure out career paths and stuff like that, go on to Clubhouse, right? And you can go into different chat rooms that exist uh, talking around the market that you're trying to build your your business around. Listen to the conversations there and listen to sentiment and feedback and, and learn from that. Um, and then, <laughs> oh, do we have a nice little cameo going on during the, no. uh, we didn't. All right, cool. Um, but, um, but yeah, I mean, go, go, go on to clubhouse chat rooms and figure out like the different market or businesses you want to work at, or you want to build a business around, right? Yeah. Listen to what people are talking about. Listen to the buzzwords they're saying, listen to like all these things in the conversations and try to find problems. Cause if you're trying to get hired, listen to what the issues in that industry are and try to figure out solutions for it. That's how you get a job very quickly. And if you're trying to build a company, listen to consistent sentiment around that problem. Then after a while, and you're building a little bit of traction, then build your own clubhouse, invite people that are enthusiasts of your idea and have them discuss it with you in an open forum. It's the easiest way to have that open forum conversation. It's not like you have to people submitting questions to you and you're answering. Like you can talk in real time answer those questions, get that sentiment. And then, yeah, just do it on like a constant basis. Like every week have a, as a user feedback session that you just have for an hour, you talk with your customers, even if you have three or four people that show up, that's enough for you to get really specific user feedback yeah. that you might not be able to get that makes your business better and better and better. And then as for somebody trying to go into the professional world, the more clubhouses, you, you can actually network with those individuals, mm-hmm. talk with them. If you ask them something that's super good. Get their Twitter. And, and yeah, get their Twitter or then you can get their LinkedIn. So imagine if you like ask a really good question, they're fascinated by it. Follow up with the LinkedIn message. Like, by the way, I, I saw you on Clubhouse. It was a great conversation. Um, I asked this question. I really appreciate your answer tied into that. Connect with them, right? So mm-hmm. you can leverage it for networking. You can't really do that with Instagram. You can't really do that with TikTok. There's no direct communication. So I think yeah. that's where I want to see the future of things like Clubhouse start going. Um, but I, I just don't think that people figure it out. I don't think there's enough users to have like them figure out these little tricks that you can do, like these little growth hacks that you yeah. can do on those platforms themselves. Yeah, I, I, uh, one service that we use for our proposal writing is Wethos. Mm-hmm. Dude, if Wethos, like the, the CEO, like, cause it's such, it's such a startup company that like I get emails that are just like, you know, schedule time to chat with the CEO for 30 minutes. And I'm just like, oh, that's, that's cool. But like, and like, maybe I'll we'll, we'll kind of look into that. But like, if he was just on like, um, on like a clubhouse, I had hundred percent just pop in. I'd mm-hmm. be like, yeah, man, I, I've been using your stuff since before there was a free option, you know, yep. like, and now, you know, we're using it. We're, we're giving them feedback and stuff like that. Like I know like, um, myself, Nikhil, uh, Nick, have you given any feedback to Wethos yet? You have? Feedback? Or yeah. Tickets? Like, uh, any like tickets? Have you given any feedback to them? I haven't. No. You haven't? I, yeah. I, I need to, cause I have a lot of, 
a lot yeah, of things no, they can do a lot better. They're 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 really responsive, and like, they're they're working hard because like a lot of the things I know that we had an issue in the beginning have already been resolved. But yeah. there are some things that really do piss me off still. That no, I yeah, it, it's it's <laughs> such like a brand new product that like, and they have such a small base of like paying users that they're like taking everything that people do not like into consideration right now, mm-hmm. which is cool because like being early on on the, on that software, we can basically well not basically we can we can steer the ship in a direction and we that get grandfathered in with the cost we do like shout out to uh, elementor because we got that shit before like anybody knew what it was and I, i'm not even gonna say how much we pay per month yeah. but i'm just gonna put out there that it now costs a thousand dollars a year and uh we're, we're, we're paying like pennies to the dollar when it comes to that so like yeah. that's why you want to jump in early but you also want to give feedback because <clears> they 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 appreciate and create a relationship with that yeah, company 100%. early on yeah, because if you if you create a relationship with those companies and you create that kind of feedback loop, or like you give them cool stuff that they're doing, um, we uh, we can you can then build a relationship where like you can then be like uh, what are they called again like like something partners like obviously a partner but like a like a certified vendor like a certified user or something yeah like yeah that. like a de- yeah dedicated vendor for yeah that, where yeah. like if if like they ever have like an event or something like that you could be a speaker at it and be mm-hmm. like oh we've used this since the beginning and it's boy howdy have we gotten clients you know <laughs> it's like um and yeah i don't know i, I think that's cool um and I, so i think that if you are running even like a software that people are using a product go on clubhouse chat about it um and just get feedback, get yep. as much feedback. Like, and you bring up a good point. It doesn't matter if there's like one person in there. That one person is a paying customer, mm-hmm. theoretically. Um, so take what they have into consideration and talk with them. Have like a full conversation. Um, you'd be surprised, I think, at just how much good stuff you can get from one feedback session, even if it's just one individual. Yeah. I mean, the, the other thing that I think is interesting about Clubhouse um, is it actually puts uh, – it rationalizes – social media so what i mean by that is you have instagram you have facebook you have youtube and all these things and people have like hundreds of thousands of followers but they only get a little bit of engagement like only a couple people are liking their posts only a couple people are commenting on their posts when you're using clubhouse it's the people that are in your room that are your social media following there's no bs behind it so if you only have three people behind that you don't have clout like you can't just do this like a lot of instagram accounts i see this all the time they have like fifteen thousand followers but they get like 30 likes it's because you can easily yeah. inflate that, right? When you go into Clubhouse, it rewards actual content. If you're providing value for people and it's engaging, it's interesting, people will watch it, people will listen to it, and then they will want to react to it, right? So I think that's the fascinating part about Clubhouse as well is I think it's going to hopefully, well, we'll see. Like I, I think there's a lot of negative lenses that we don't know about yet, but I do hopefully think it's going to slowly bring down issues with um, these dark patterns that exist on other social media platforms that create this really depressive <laughs> like environment yeah. that um people suffer from anxiety and depression and all these other things that exist out there mm-hmm. because they're so caught up on the number of followers instead of like the actual social value that you're yeah. supposed to be getting out of social networking dude can i just can i just say this i um i think like when you compare um myspace early days i don't my like myspace peak facebook peak instagram peak Twitter, I think, will forever be in a peak. Like that, Twitter You're just obsessed with Twitter, Twitter man. <laughs> Twitter.com should not be a free website. I would, I would gladly pay five dollars a month for Twitter.com. Um, <laughs> but, um, uh, t- like TikTok and Clubhouse. So, so basically, if you take all those and like observe how much irreparable damage was done to like middle school and high schoolers on like you have to look like this and you have to look mm. like that. Compared to Clubhouse and TikTok, which are entirely accepting for the most part, obviously you have like some like. Bullshit. Oh, TikTok! TikTok gets pretty brutal. Not yeah, gonna so lie. <laughs> t- there, there's some parts, but like overall, look, yeah, look, yeah. look at the overall picture here. Um, I was talking, to, I was talking to, to Alyssa about it the other day. I was just like, um, not our guest, Alyssa, my yeah. wife. Alyssa, I was, <laughs> I was talking to, to my wife about it the other day, um, and I was just like, I honestly think that like TikTok is like prob like I've learned like I don't have a, I don't use TikTok, but like I use. I, I use Twitter to look at TikToks mm-hmm. um, and it's like the amount of information that I've gotten from them that are just like so wholesome and like so like mental health positive and mm-hmm. all this stuff and like same thing with Clubhouse like Clubhouse is very much like they have like um, they have like rooms that are just dedicated so you just go in there and like spew all of your your guts out and mm-hmm. then people are just like hey it's all right like that's cool like that's never I, I don't I've that's never existed on on any other platform no, you're not gonna post the instagram photo or something yeah. like that and so then, sad. And, and then <laughs> everybody commenting like 
I support you. Yeah. Like you're, you're, you're most likely it'll get likes, but it won't get engagement. It won't mm. get like that actual conversation behind, which is not going to solve the problem, mm. which is like, you're trying to get it out, but you can't yeah. because like nobody's reacting to yeah, it. Yeah. And then you have like TikTok duets, which like you can literally, uh, like through video and audio respond to somebody's TikTok. Um, and then you have obviously clubhouse, which you can have a full conversation with somebody, um, addressing the problem there. Um, me, uh, Nikhil and Heidi, uh, made a room, uh, like a week or two ago. I, I forget at this point in time, doesn't matter. Um, and, uh, <laughs> one of Nikhil's old supervisors or bosses was in it. Like he joined it <clears throat> and I just like, Nikhil was like, oh my God, I think one of my old, like, he was like, it's my old boss. Like he like on Slack or something like that. And I was just like, I was like, all right, he's not your boss now. So he like, <laughs> let, I was like, let, let's see where this goes. Um, so I was just like, hey man, like we, uh, just gen- uh, cause we were talking like us three beforehand and I brought up to him and I was like, hey man, just like at a general curiosity, is there like anything that like, that you're like going through that you want to talk about right now? Like work-wise, like you just want to like go off your chest. And he did, he like just started venting to us. And I was just like, I like, I, I had to like, I had to mute myself because I was just like, I was like so giggly to myself. I was just like, are you kidding me? Like, I have no idea who this guy is. Um, but he's like spewing his like literal like days stress uh, onto us. And I was just like, this is fucking great. Like, this is fantastic. Like yeah. the fact that like the, the dude, like because you're hearing voices, mm-hmm. you, you are more likely to be okay with letting your guard down and just talk to an individual, like have a conversation with somebody. Um, and then like, yeah, and then we like just cracked jokes and like laughed and stuff like that. And then, um, and then he followed me and then I followed him. Like, it's like, that's cool. Like, I think that I think is like the cool little like nugget of the golden nugget of, like, yeah. of clubhouse. And I think, uh, TikTok as well, but I think clubhouse more so. Yep. And I, and I, that, that's why I'm, I'm very confident that clubhouse. Yeah. Like clubhouse itself. We'll see how long it lasts, but the concept of clubhouse is here to stay and other social media platforms are going to have to catch up to it. Um, and it kind of changed the way that we are going because the evolution of social media does change. It's kind of like in seven year cycles, to be honest. It's always about seven years. It's it's every every about seven years you hit a peak. They try to innovate a little bit. They have like three year time span after that, and then they just kind of fall off the map. Um, that that tends to yeah. be kind of the more consistent. Because what when did Instagram officially like become Instagram? Because it was it was before that it, in two thousand eight it was being developed. Yeah, I think like 2010, 2012. 2012, yeah. I think it was, yeah, about 2012. It was before I went, uh, We I started at UCR, so it had to be like, yeah, two years. I think it was 2012. I think it was like, I think it was like 2010 when it was like a thing. Yeah. And then I think it was like 2012 or 2014 in that window when Facebook bought it for like one, was it like $1.2 billion? Or something yeah. Like that? So it is about a seven years until it hits its peak because it, it peaked out in 2017. That's when it had the most users. Oh yeah, man. Instagram was like, was like the shit for a good while. Yeah. Like that was like, a t- like, I remember like, I there's you I tried Instagram for a little bit and I was like this is dumb and then Facebook bought it and then the algorithm hit and I was like ooh this is nice oh this, this like, hits nice yeah this is nice <laughs> this is nice this is exactly what I want and for some reason Instagram just thinks that I want to see a bunch of freaking dudes just lifting massive weights which I'm okay with I actually look here's the thing I click on it though I'm like yeah man fucking get that shit um, but I, I think that's I think if I was to go to my Discover it'd just be like computer parts dudes deadlifting. Um, and dogs. That'd be those would be the three things that would just get fed into my Discover feed, uh, as of right now. Um, which I mean, cool. The algorithm's fine. It works. Um, Deadlifts, dogs, and dudes. Yeah, de- the three D's, triple D, not diners, dives, and drive-ins, but uh, my triple D is fucking deadlifts, deadlifts, dudes, and dogs. Oh man. Uh, so what? What do you, what do you think is uh, the the next thing when it comes to like what Clubhouse should or their do you think they're going to roll out? Like, what, what do you think are some features? Because, like, I think some of the features they should do is similar to, like, uh, what Twitch does, right? Like, you can give emotes. You can give, like, these kinds of things or, like, give social kind of back and forth, like, within rooms or reward people or give them some kind of um, status in a way within the platform. So, for example, if you're consistent, like, the more you're engaging on it, like, the more you're giving these conversations and leading talks and all these kinds of things, the more people that listen to you, that you can get access to like VIP rooms and stuff like that. Cause if they do open the floodgates, right. And everybody can access it. They still do need to feel the exclusive feeling to it to a certain extent. Otherwise you're going to lose some value from the people that have loved that exclusive feeling as they try to go into other platforms. I don't even want to know what's in the chat right now. So I'm, I'm, I'm not even gonna, not even gonna peek at it, but what do you think is the next thing that, uh, 
All right, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that they have to figure out a way to make money because right now there's no monetization. That's what I was like, actually going to ask is like, how, how are they actually even making, like what, what is their business model? Like their are they waiting model, for advertising? Or? Their business model is they have a lot of people on there right now, yeah. which is, you know. So the, step one, step yeah. one of any social network, get people. Yeah. Um, that's, that's, where the, that's how they're getting their funding now because a lot of people are, are on it. And so VCs are just shelling money at them. Um, I think that they have to come up with a subscription model. I think that'd be that'd be like it, so either they have to come up with a really unique monetization scheme or they just come up with subscriptions. Um where it's like if someone's like a, like there's people on there that have like hundreds of thousands of followers. Mm-hmm. Like I I'm almost willing to guarantee you that if that person with hundreds of thousands of followers becomes like one of their subscriber people or like an affiliate whatever they want to call it. Um, and it's only like, like kind of like how Twitch has it where it's like five bucks a month. Mm-hmm. Um, but maybe they do like $2 a month or a dollar a month or something like that. They have like different tiers. Um, because truth be told, I don't, I wouldn't like, I would be hard. Like I would really have to like the person to pay yeah. $5 a month to just hear them talk Yeah. when like podcasts are free, you know, for the most part. Um, with Twitch, at least you get like some visual stuff mm-hmm. and there's like some fun things that you can do. Um, and some streamers do like really like eccentric stuff, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so I think like a dollar or two dollars would be kind of I think that golden zone of yeah. how much people are willing to pay. That'd be one thing that I can see happening. Um, sponsored chat rooms where it's just like the room is spo- like I don't know like you know who's like a who's like a sponsor that everyone always Old Spice. Oh sure, like Old Spice <laughs> sponsors a room and then you are a part of the room and well, like um, Clubhouse gets a cut. You as like the host whatever gets a cut. Gets yeah. a cut. Um, I think that would be a cool way to go about doing it. Uh, it just really depends, but I can't see a world of advertising, but unless it's in that way, advertise rooms. Um, I can't see a way that advertising would make sense for Clubhouse at all. Besides, again, sponsored rooms. So I, I, I would have to disagree with the advertising side because I actually do think that they could leverage advertising quite a bit. So one thing that they can do, I just don't know what their data privacy is right now. I, I have no idea, and I, I think this would actually kind of get in the hot shit. But like, just what, an Excel sheet. <laughs> so what they were really they could do is like you could leverage ai to take like conversations that people are having right and then the buzzwords and then ping it to people and then cross-reference that data with like a facebook or a uh, google or somebody else right uh create a data platform where like they can anonymously get the data but it's still id tracked and then they, they can create complementary data sets and then um sell that because the more people are talking so like, oh so, to put okay it, so you're, you're you're going at the the uh, big data side of it yeah okay the big data side because think about it if you're having let's say there's a million active users per day okay. a million people talking we talk faster than we type we're saying things that we might not type you're opening up about things that you might not type just like Nico's boss. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So what, what happens out of that, right, is you can then take um, th- that audio and then you can pull from that words that people are saying. It's not going to be 100% accurate in the beginning because right now machine learning, do- it, it's not like perfected. Mm. But you can take those conversations, figure out what people care about, what rooms they've been into, who they listen to, who influences them. You understand influencer marketing. You understand what they want to buy. You understand their buying trends. It's quite scary. I don't know what their data privacy is, but that's the reality of conversations. The more data you're throwing out there, and we're throwing more data through conversation than we ever will through text or video or to photo, you can leverage that data to create a data center that then you can either have your own way of advertising, which I don't believe they would do because that doesn't make sense, or then you can partner with a Facebook. I don't know if they would do that either or partner with a Google. I don't know if they're going to do that either because they, they, these guys are kind of rebellious. They, they don't really want to be tied into those companies. So I don't know if they would, but that is, a, that is a really easy monetization scheme that makes the platform free, but it's really not free. It's running the Google model. Everything is, here you go. You have it for free, but I'm just going to take all your data. Take I know every single damn thing that you do. Yeah. So. I mean, if that's the case, ByteDance could just buy them. Yeah. I don't see, that, that to me makes a lot of sense. Like if 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 that's a thing that maybe is is possible, and I don't see why it wouldn't be. I don't see like I think the one the person that would buy them that makes the most sense would be Byte Dance. Yeah. Because that why not integrate yeah. it with TikTok in some way, shape, or form? Yeah, and I mean like I, I think that would make the most sense actually because TikTok's the only platform that is not currently creating these chat rooms where all of the competitors, big tech companies, are trying to make these chat room functionalities. Yeah. Facebook happening. has one. Yep. Twitter has one. 
So, and if you think about it too, that's actually a smart move for the founders because their entire strategy is acquisition. They're, they do not care about making money. They care about getting to the point to be acquired. So their VCs are happy. Everybody's happy. And whoever gets it will be very happy because they have a platform that they can get so much data from. So I do think that probably is the long-term strategy for them. Um, but I don't know. Like, we, I think it's too early. I, I want to see what happens once they let Android uh, users come on. When they allow me to come onto the platform, let's see what... Uh, I want to see this world of Clubhouse. Uh, it's all right. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I... I If I was a Batman, I would say that around holidays this year is going to be like peak Clubhouse. Because that's going to... That's during like... Vac- like I, Summertime, people are out doing stuff. Like holidays, people are at home just trying to like figure out outlets Mm -hmm. um i if i was clubhouse and i was still going through this like mulling i need acquisition kind of thing i would want to get acquired way sooner rather than later like i'm talking like mid next year at the latest get acquired if not this year get acquired just because i think that monetization thing is going to be a big deal Mm -hmm. um there's going to be a point where vcs are going to be like okay well you've You've, we've been giving you money for about two years now. Like what's, when are we going to get some, some, something back? Yeah. I um, mean, mo- most venture capital is going to look at it either. They're either going to look at a three to five year uh, mm-hmm. track. If it's an acquisition pool, depending on it, it's software. So it's about three to five years. Or then if it's a, um, they're more looking at the long-term kind of play and, and, and creating kind of like the IPO or long-term acquisition, like a big time acquisition, then it's more the seven to 10 year route. But they usually want to three to five years. They're, they're trying to at least get something, back. get something back. But they, they bet on 20 companies. Out of the 20 companies, only five of them have to succeed anyway. So I'm sure Clubhouse is right now a very attractive in that because it's, it's a, I think it's a very gambling bet. But if it does go the right way and the right company acquires them, it, it'll be a massive acquisition deal. Um, so it's quite interesting to hear, kind of understand what's, what, is, what is going on because I do think it's going to re kind of reshape the entire social media landscape overall. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for Clubhouse. Like I said, I, I I go on there just to listen more than anything. Um, very rarely end up actually like piping up, which is surprising considering I love to hear my voice so much. But <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I usually just go on there just to listen to stuff because uh, people on there are usually a lot smarter than me more often than not. So yeah, it, it's fun to just listen and just like l- hear what other people's opinions are about certain things and certain marketing trends and stuff like that. Um yeah, I mean, I know I, I'm I'm pro Clubhouse. I think it's gonna be cool. I think I think the future of it's gonna be fine. Um, would you Would you care to um, what what do you, What do you think you're gonna talk about when you get your Clubhouse? Uh, what do you want to talk about once once uh, the masses are uh, the the peons you know are are allowed into <laughs> Clubhouse? Jeez. Um, so I would probably focus on three different areas. So one of them is digital marketing, like us talking about digital marketing, talking yeah. about uh, not even digital marketing, digital strategy. Think of your entire digital infrastructure and then like giving advice to people, having conversations with people, especially like social impact organizations or early stage startups, and just having interesting conversations about like how they're trying to enter into the market, what are some approaches they're having, what's working, what's not working, how should they should think about it? Because it's going to help us to understand also we can provide value to people but it's also going to help us think what's the future of digital strategy because it changes every year. Every year, new platforms, new digital infrastructures, it's never the same. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the second thing I'd be really fascinated by is what is the next emerging tech? I, I, I'm, I'm obsessed with that all the time. So I want to listen to people who know what the hell they're talking about when it comes to things like blockchain, things like AI, things like how you can leverage machine learning algorithms into different kind of ecosystems. That's, that's huge for me. I want to understand that as well because that also helps us um, in our business and where we want to go when it comes to our business. And if we want to create sub brands and sub businesses, we know what kind of areas are good to kind of invest into or build out of. Yeah. And then the third thing is me and Ethan, for sure, we're going to have like one just dedicated to audio because there are a lot of audio heads out there and I want to talk with them. I want to understand right now, like what are they spending money on what they want to do? Um, that might tie a little bit also into esports and talking to some esports gamers and where they think the future of gaming is going to be. Mm. But it's going to be a lot for customer discovery and early customers and getting that feedback and creating product feature sets and all these kinds of things. So I see a lot of value out of Clubhouse. And I, I, I think it's great because you can just dedicate like, oh, every Friday at this time, I'm going to have a chat room open. You can have three people or five people in there. Let's just come and talk about audio, which sounds boring. But a lot, when you talk with people that love audio, they'll really get into it, yeah. which is so fascinating to me because 
um, the more I've talked with people that are obsessed with audio, the more I've learned is that they all like different things. Like they like these small like nuances. Someone likes an ohm. Someone likes an amp. <laughs> exactly. So- <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Some people like bass that literally breaks their spine. You know, there's yeah, there's, yeah. there's different levels of it. Um, but it's fascinating to talk with different perspectives because we're so stuck in our own bubbles all the time and like our friend groups and everything like that. So you might not even think about how somebody in like like Berlin who's like a straight hardcore like bass head yeah. is thinking about audio versus somebody who's in like uh you know New York thinking about it or like different market areas because we can't get access to that but if you can just talk to them in real time I can ask them questions or they can ask us questions and we can answer it so I, I I'm excited to get on Clubhouse and it's actually really perfect timing for me because I have no reason to be on it for the like next month and a half but then mm-hmm. after that is when I really want to start getting engaged on it anyways is that what you tell yourself because you don't have an ios device i I don't got a reason to be on there right now it's fine well that pretty much actually yeah okay all right fair enough you got the delusion i guess is there um yeah i i always tell myself that i'm just like one of these days i'm just gonna start like spouting like uh like a bit like i'm gonna start like a a fucking uh like a socialist revolution on (laughs) on clubhouse i never do because i never want to i'm always afraid that like some like right wingers are gonna be like how dare you and i'm just, i just i just don't got time for that my brain automatically just like goes to just like can i kick people like <laughs> like immediately just like kicking people hey, out. free speech man you're gonna bring that up i'm gonna be the Hell first on, one man. to jump in there and be like capitalism baby let's go let's have that conversation shell them out dude. <laughs> shell them out right <laughs> fucking tap on the three little dots on their name and pew, they're out of here but um speaking about that subject i think that's actually a good transition into amazon and what is going right. on um so for those that don't know what's going on amazon right now is Amazon and the workers of Amazon right now are in a dispute when it comes to Atlanta, Georgia, and it is a dispute a, to say the least. To say the least, it is a very, very important, pivotal moment in our U.S. history when it comes to labor rights. The mm-hmm. reason why is because if what happens in Atlanta, Georgia, the workers win with a union and can unionize, it will change the landscape of how supply chain networks work as well as how businesses operate. To the better or to the worst, there's conversations there. I think there's some elements of labor unions, and I brought this up before. There are negative sides of it, but I do think there's more pro sides to it as well mm. that aren't talked about enough and are muffled because the U.S. economy runs on dollars. It doesn't run on how much you're making per hour or if you can even afford to live. So right now what's happening at Atlanta, Georgia, is uh, they moved the Amazon warehouse over, and this is a consistent case. Uh, Amazon workers get paid minimum $15 an hour, which sounds pretty nice if you think about it. But the entire argument is that they're trying to do uh, economic development in the areas that they're putting these facilities in, which then destroy all the other businesses in that same market when they build it. So now there's less competition means that they have actually the income disparity and they can say like, oh, we can pay this. And if you don't want to work here, we'll swap another person in that spot because we know that these are the only opportunities that exist. It creates this unnatural it, it doesn't like the concept of capitalism is a free market. You can compete against each other and people can choose. And I, I, I love that concept because it does create innovation. It does create more opportunities for people. But where we're at right now is cronyism, which is actually the worst side. of It doesn't help anybody where it's that we're we have socialist ideals towards corporations, but not towards the workers. We, yeah. we kind of demonize the worker. But then we look at the company as that's the that's the, the greatest thing in the world. So. As of right now, obviously, they're trying to unionize in, in Georgia when it comes to that Amazon. Um, and even like the Biden administration is pushing back on it. We have a couple other people that are actively talking about it. Uh, I don't know if you know who Killer Mike is. I do. Okay, I Mike, love yeah. Killer Mike. I listened to his speech about it. It was fantastic. Yeah. And he was, and he, he's, he's, a, he's a business owner. He, he understands that entire area. He, he was growing up in that entire area. And I think he explains it very, very well um, how Amazon treats uh, the people there, and now it's gone to the level where the new CEO of Amazon is even talking crap about. Well, so he, <laughs> he is like the CEO. He's not like the CEO CEO. But he's like the CEO of like, um, of like I guess like personal development, it's like of people basically. Mm-hmm. He's like the CEO that deals with like the people facing side of it. Um, oh uh, yeah, but yeah, man. I mean, it's the fact I the workers on Amazon aren't mad about making fifteen dollars an hour. They're mad about the fact that you know you have to. Like the working conditions, yeah. which is, you know, it's not fair for the $15 an hour wage. Yeah. I mean, the fact that you don't really have a break the fact that people are like literally 
peeing in bottles. Um, also, literally, like, forget about the peeing in the like peeing in the bottles. Awful, really fucking bad. <laughs> um, shouldn't be happening. But delivery drivers are like pooping in the in the delivery car because they cannot stop to do it. They they just pull over really quick, do it in the car in like a bag, um, and then they just like keep driving. Like the fact that that's happening is mm-hmm. like Jesus fuck. Like that's like that's just, like next level. Like um, looking at sh- getting packages out as opposed to looking at people. Um, and you know, like it's. I, I think that's that's the big thing that like forget about the fact that like pe- the big push is like, oh, Amazon pays their workers a living wage, fifteen dollars an hour. Oh, well, look, that's what Elizabeth Warren and like all these people were talking about, fifteen dollars an hour. We're like, sure, like that's fine, but like like you say, when you create like uh, company cities, which is like back in like um, the Standard Oil days in like the twenties, the thirties, um, not the thirties, excuse me, the the tens and the twenties, back mm-hmm. in 1910, 1920s, when like one s- company was the was the employment hub for the entire city literally company cities um it create like at first it sounds really cool because like oh cool we all we all work in the same place we all Mm -hmm. live in the same place but when that company goes down that entire city collapses because it's gone detroit literally look at detroit look all all all, everything used to be literally like the the golden goose of Mm -hmm. the united states um and now it's it's really bad there um because there's because the company just left because it was cheaper to go you know to go manufacture somewhere else than it was to yeah. do it in the states um but i i think that that's like the big thing you got to focus on here is like people are not complaining about the money people are not complaining about the benefits people mm-hmm. are not complaining about that stuff that's fine what they're complaining about is the fact that the working conditions are awful the brakes are basically non-existent and like amazon like likes to pump like a, they're pushing out like have you seen like the amazon news twitter handle no oh my god dude like so the Amazon CEO, the whatever the fuck his name is, the the CEO of People or whatever, mm. that dude's on Twitter, and then there's a, an official Amazon Twitter handle that's called Amazon News, um, and right now, dude, and they're like they're doing so many nasty things. So this is how this, the whole drama started with them is somebody somebody linked and talked about. Okay, so the CEO dude said something, and someone replied to him and said like, "Yo, aren't your people pissing in bottles?" And then. Um, the Amazon news to hand replied to that person and said, you, you don't really believe that the peeing in bottles things is real. Right. And then like started going off on like a weird tirade about how like they're like one of the most fair and equitable employers in the United States and all this and all that. And then like that just started off a huge firestorm because it's like, you don't like the fact that a, a company page flat, flat out told like a person a journalist, Hey, that thing isn't real. When yeah. like there's multiple sightings of documentation, it, documentation every- of everything. Um, is like literally living living in like some weird like dystopia dystopia <laughs> yeah. kind of mentality that Amazon's going and apparently this is like through like the grapevine, um, but it was uh, Jeffrey Kisses my man Jeff Bezos um, who ended up like ordering that stuff who he was just like basically like in internal memos he was just like um, we're being way too soft on this unionization stuff like we need to like really go at them um, and that's when like the Amazon News Twitter handle started getting really negative and really like antagonistic yep um and then they started making fake amazon worker accounts Mm -hmm. that would be like i work yeah yeah, i work at this warehouse i don't think we should unionize because blah 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 um (laughs) and like it's like they're literally making fake accounts like the accounts were brand new they're using like um what's there's like a website i forget what it's called but it auto generates faces Mm -hmm. like there's a website you can go on that like literally creates a a face that doesn't exist um using like ai and stuff Mm -hmm. like that um, and they're using those or the one that I saw that was hilarious is they used um, they cropped in on a picture of Dude Perfect, uh, like one of the, the one of the main guys. From, have you seen that one? Yeah. They cropped in on like the main guy from Dude Perfect. A famous guy. Yeah, a famous person. So it's like and, like the dude's like, what are you doing? Like this mm. is like you're obviously a fake account. And they're like spouting off all this like anti unionization stuff um, and how like that's all awful. And um, one of the the stuff that's coming out a lot more now is. Um, and then I, I wasn't even aware of was like to the extent of like the amount of like slave labor mm-hmm. um, that was going on in the warehouses. So like they would get 30 minute breaks, right? The workers. So the worker gets a 30 minute break. But what what you don't like process and really think about when you hear like, oh, a worker gets a 30 minute break. Like, you know, that's I think they get multiple 30 minute breaks, obviously. But uh, when a worker gets a 30 minute break in your head, you're processing it like, oh, that's nice. They, they're getting breaks, you yeah. know? Um but what what is not being told here is um, 
a mass of workers get a 30 minute break. And for some reason, Amazon, which which can develop a store where you walk in and walk out without ever interacting with a cashier and it pays for your own stuff, cannot develop a way to not use a punch timer, mm. like a physical beep, boop, beep, boop, boop, and you punch in and now you're clocked back in or clocked out. Um, they still have to do that at the warehouses. So what ends up happening is y- your 30 minute break or your 30 minute lunch or whatever it is ends up being like a five minute break because you then have to stand in line to punch back in with hordes of people who also took a break at that exact same time. So it's like, unless you want to show up late, even though you're not late, you're in the warehouse. Um, you have to go through this like super antiquated, like punching system where like, it's just, it's stupid. And these are things that obviously like are coming to light now more than ever because of the because of all the stuff coming out because Amazon News started spouting its weird antagonistic stuff of just like yeah. it's every day it's like it's tweeting about how like unions are bad how like if you believe this you're dumb this is really what's happening we're the best Amazon's number one um, yeah I don't know man and and like I I think this I think the Amazon stuff hits hits home it should hit home here especially to Riverside because Amazon is. Is San Bernardino is basically becoming, and like Inland Empire as a whole, are basically becoming like a city warehouse region. city. Yeah, um, San Bernardino primarily is where all the warehouses are. Amazon, I think, has like four warehouses in yep. San Bernardino City alone. Um, there, I think there's two here in Riverside, um, and I think there's one in Moreno Valley. There's they're everywhere here mm-hmm. in the area. Um, so people that we know or people that interact with people that we know are are being disparaged in this way. Mm-hmm. Um. And obviously there's people that are just that don't care because like, oh, you know, they gave me stocks and I have look at all this money I have. And I guess like some people like some people will look at the money and they excuse whatever it is for whatever reason. And I get it. Some people are like that. But like I think I think that a victory in Atlanta is going to mean a victory for the Inland Empire. So it's like it's, I support that stuff a thousand million percent. Like I, I know when like uh, Bernie Sanders was raising and like AOC was raising funds for them yeah. like in the early days I gave the money I was like absolutely man like here here you go like take the money give it to them um have have them fund for that union push cuz you you kind of hit the nail on the head when you said that this theoretically could be one of the most like pivotal points for US labor relations yep um since Reagan's fucking ghoul ass <laughs> killed unions you know yeah. um with the airline unions back back in back in the 80s mm-hmm. Um, so it's like the fact that unions can come back, the fact that, you know, unions died in the eighties for the most part, obviously some unions are still around. Um, and they're coming back because people are realizing that 40 years without unions, like if you look at like the income disparity, if you look at the charts after the eighties, after the unions go away, that shit fucking executive pay goes up and employee pay stays stagnant and with inflation, that means you're actually making less money. And, And I, and I think the important thing here, right, is like. You don't have to be a, like, this is where it kind of bothers me. It's like, you don't have to be political and say, like, I'm a Democrat or Republican. You should care about people. Like, yes, this is a yes, people question. Yes. And we, we can I talk about- I don't care about, if that's a Republican. Like, that's, you're, you're <laughs> pissing in a bottle. Like, that's, it's, it's awful. Yeah, like, I, I can go and explain, like, for example, like, and, I, and I'll, I'll pull it in on a very capitalistic lens right here. Yeah. Is, look- what is happening is what I was explaining. It's creating something called cronyism where it's one company creates so much power for themselves where they are the, the socialist entity that can control labor laws. They can control labor relations. They can call governmental, they can control policy. That's very scary to me because that's not creating a free market, right? For somebody who is hardcore, like I'm a capitalist, right? And like, I honestly would put myself in that bucket to that lens, but I also care about people. So there's a lot of policies that I think should be changed because of that. Mm-hmm. If you want to create a free market, then make it so that you can actually have companies that compete against each other, multiple different opportunities for people to get hired, right? Mm-hmm. That increases everybody's income because now they have to get the top talent, right? Back and forth. Instead of one company that can just cycle people through mm-hmm. however they wish, you can actually create real competition and innovation out of that. Instead of one conglomerate, which then can become stagnant and then push back and never help the individuals kind of like grow. It's not helping income growth. It's helping the business grow their capital very, very quickly, which then goes to the executives or stockholders of the company, not the people actually creating the income wealth. And I think that's what I I hear this all the time, which is like, well, they took the risk, so they get the reward. I agree with that because to an extent that if you come up with an idea, you should reap the benefits of it. But how much? 
how much should you do it? Because if you create employer practices to get you to that standpoint, to make billions of dollars, right? And you can't even raise the income value, you're actually devaluing of actually innovating, you're making your business better. Don't get me wrong, Amazon invests a lot of money into other technologies they're creating and they're using their cash flow for that thing. And that's great. They are creating a lot of great innovation that makes the United States very competitive. Yeah, AWS is fantastic. It's fantastic. But that doesn't mean that as a company as a whole, you can then completely forget about one side of like where the actual hardcore labor is happening Mm -hmm. and people have to pay their bills and all these things. And it's great that they're paying $15 an hour, which is, look, they're paying more than most companies. And I respect that side. But you also have to treat it with how are the workers working to get that $15 an hour? Yeah. Because it has to be measurable to a real labor standard. So it's competitive in the market because it's not like that. And I, I hear this all the time too. It's like, well, they can always leave and find another company. No, they cannot. If, they literally if, cannot. If, if that company dominates the entire market, you have to leave the entire state. Like you have to leave that the city. city yeah. And it's like that is, if you don't, if you have barely enough money to like live in that city, and you're telling them they have to move, it's not like they have money. Like you magically can just move out and then start their life all over again and stuff like that. So that that's where I really wish that we have more open conversations with like on both sides of the political ideologies, explain economic development and how, how it happens out of it. The whole argument that labor unions slow GDP growth has been falsified to yeah. the standard. Like it might slightly, like a little, little ticker, it might hit it because you're going to have negotiations. But is that worth it to have at least the workers who are creating the income value to a business at the table to have these conversations to make sure yeah. it is fair? And I think that, that's where we need to go. Care about people. Like that, it's that not a question like, about money. That, that to me is honestly like the most like mind... But like, like, look, I think I, and it's like I, I remember growing up, you would always hear this like mentality. You're just like, oh, yeah, you know, you're you're a Democrat until you start making a bunch of money and then you're a Republican. And it's like that. I fucking hope that's not the case. <laughs> but like um, but like you, you kind of touch on all the all the union is is the workers have somebody who sits at the table and helps make decisions. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's realistically like that's all you're doing. The fact that companies are devaluing the people who make them money Mm -hmm. so much that they're not even allowing one person to be a representative representative for the people who are making them money is crazy to me. Um, I think that also kind of feeds into the nature of like our business and how like there's like, we're as about as transparent and equal as we can try to be, you know? Um, But like the idea to me, it's like the, like if someone who was a part of our, our business who was making us money, had an input that would help them do better and maybe even be more productive Mm -hmm. why wouldn't we take that into consideration you know so that that's the crazy part to me it's like is is the this idea of like ah the workers don't know what they're talking about they just let them do their thing and let them drone around and yeah they didn't come up with the idea they're not sophisticated enough they're just doing the basic thing and everybody else can do and that's why it's even though they literally can't they there literally is no robot around that can do exactly what the person right now as of right now yeah um i'm sure that boston dynamic is gonna make a absolute killing oh who owns hyundai hyundai has like a 51 percent now right Uh, i'm i'm not sure but like yeah auto auto well the thing that honestly does scare me and the reason why i'm i'm very pro union in this case is because this is going back to my concept of like the concept of capitalism, right? Like let's, let's say that you are uh, Amazon, which is making net billions of dollars that they can then put into R and D and not pay taxes on it. Right. They're then investing into these uh, machines that they can put into the warehouses that displaces all the workers. What happens to that city and all the people that have been working there nonstop when you can automate every single thing that they do and you just put robots to be able to do it? Because that is the future. That is exactly what Uber's roadmap is. They want to have autonomous yeah. vehicles. So all these Uber drivers are going to lose it. Lyft is going to lose the same way. Amazon, they don't need employees. What happens to the entire economy based off that? Like that should scare more people because if if people aren't making money, they can't put that money back into the economy. That's how GDP is run. It is run by me making a paycheck and me not putting it in my bank account, but spending it. And trust me, Americans are really good at that. We're really, we're really good at spending money. That scares me because what you, what happens is if you create this massive income disparity gap and people don't have money to spend aside from their bare essentials, like bare, bare essentials, the, the markets don't move fast enough. When new innovation comes out, people can't afford and buy it. It's, it's splitting it. And what happens then is the middle class is paying on both friends. They're getting mad at like, oh, I'm paying the taxes for people that are in lower classes. No, you're actually paying the, the subsidies that these other companies are getting, which is now on the other end of it. And it's just, it's, 
if you look at cultural revolutions and all these things, that's what honestly scares me right now. What's going on is that we got into the point where people are saying things like, like, like hardcore, like let's go to socialism. And then there's like, no, that let's go to libertarianism. Like, do we haven't even had a real capitalism in the United States since the eighties. We really haven't because yeah. it's gone to cronyism. And I, I'm worried about how mentality of the next generation, like we're growing up into this really tense world right now where like people aren't even give like they don't understand why capitalism works well if it's done correctly but right now it's not fair and then they they also have to understand that why some things should be free like healthcare or education because that also creates gdp growth yeah it's gonna be very interesting the next couple decades i i, yeah. I just think that like the new generation is going to even be way more uh like socialistic minded and i think it's going to have a quick pushback because i do think we in that case, we will be, quote unquote, the Republicans at that point, because I will push back on somebody who says that everything should be free because when you, when you, or like that you should have XXXX because then it doesn't create an incentive in a market to create innovation and push forward. And innovation is really what creates GDP growth. Mm. So it, it's a very complicated thing. And I, I think we've gone to the point where people try to make it so simple, like, oh, this happens and this is this is how it is. This happens and this is how it is. This should all be, uh, you know, like work your ass off and you'll be successful one day and like, yeah. you know, do 80 hour weeks and all these kinds of things. It's like, not everybody should be doing that, man. Like if you're providing value to society, you should be able to pay your bills. So it's as simple as that. So yeah. I'm very curious of where things are going to go. Um, there's a me. there's a book. Um, you know who Casey Neistat is, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know? So Casey Neistat's brother started a YouTube channel. Things like Van Neistat is his name. Um and he, he, it's fantastic. It's, it's, it's a really cool, it's like super avant-garde. Like it's like out of fucking left field, um, the stuff that he talks about, but he does it in a really elegant way. Um, but he, he brought up this book. Um, I, I for, I'm forgetting the name of it, but it's on like my like order list, uh, to like to get it because it sounds, it seems interesting, but this like idea of like a, every 80, I think it's 80 years, every 80 years, there's like a turning point, mm -hmm. um, with like society and, every four there's like four turning points in like a big like like change mm -hmm. i think is what it was was that so like the big thing I'm trying to remember exactly i watched this video like last week um so and apparently like the big turning point for uh for us happens in seven years like 2028 i guess is going to be like the big turning point and the book kind of kind of references how like you know there's like it's all cyclical and how it's like stuff like goes from like really good like really shitty right now we're in the really shitty one like right like we're in like the very bad one and then it goes to like very shitty like depressingly shitty and then it gets decent and then it gets pretty good and then it gets shitty again like that's kind of the move it's like block one is awful block two is better like recovery block three is like state like you kind of stay in this like stationary kind of growth and then block four is downturn. And then again, it starts over again. Block one is really bad. And it, it's just like, it's this ebb and flow of like, of, of ups and downs. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I agree with you after, I want to read the book because I want to see, I want to get my own kind of opinion on it. Yeah. But I think it's interesting this like, because everything is cyclical. I think growth is cyclical. Um, I, just, I mean, to some extent, like um, bad stuff are all, is also cyclical, like yeah. big wars, cyclical um, growth, GDP growth, cyclical, like it, all these things are kind of happening in a cycle. Um, but I think, I mean, I would hope that in the future, we're going to realize that people are, should be the thing that we focus on, yep. you know? And I think that's the thing that's happening with like the unionization and Amazon is people should be the thing that we are focusing on because without the people, there is no money. Yep. Without the people, there is no business that can run. And if there's no business being run. There are no jobs that are being created. Mm -hmm. There's no jobs being created. There's no money going into the, into the the government. There's no money. The government goes down. Yep. Like it. It's it's this very. It's this big circle of like of of stakeholders that go back towards like GDP. Mm -hmm. But like the central cog is the person who makes the money for the business to pay out the people, pay taxes, and then goes back to the into the economy in some way, shape, or form through a paycheck. Um, Obviously, every piece is important there, but if if you were to tell me which was the most important, the business or the person, I'm gonna say the person because the business isn't making money. 
Unless it's like a one or two people that made a software and then just like sealed it out, just you know, wipe their hands and, and they're and done. I, and I think that's actually an important point is like when the people are no longer important in that that equation is when we should actually have a conversation about universal basic income. Yeah, where yeah, I yeah. think that things are going to go anyways because we are getting so efficient with technology that every for one every person like every year, like the output per person is increasing, meaning that you need less people in a job to create the same amount of money. That's a bit scary because i think we're going to go through this entire evolution where technology moves so fast and we're creating so much value um that people aren't as important for a company anymore aside from those who create the companies so there's gonna like like you said i i, I do think in, in history does repeat itself there's gonna be a lot of interesting things that will happen in the next decade um it, it's a it's a bit scary but at the same time you shouldn't be scared you should just look at trends and the best investors in the world for example they look at history that's that's their pivotal moment of who they invest into how they grow their in, in income and all these kinds of things um and then the other thing i would just bring up from there just tying in everything together about like what you were talking about on on clubhouse for like everybody doing like forex trading and all these kinds of bitcoin trading yeah. all these kinds of, um just throwing it out there we have been going up in the markets for the last like like 20, like well, now it's been 10? 11 years. Oh, uh, yeah. It's, uh, it's, no, we're in 2021. So, 2009 was 2009. Down. So, 10, 12 years. Yeah, yeah. 12 yeah. years we've been going up. Just putting it out there. It doesn't just go up. It money, also machine, goes, money machine does go. not always go burr. That's, that's, <laughs> that's a big time fact. It will also go down. Yeah. So, just warning people out there because I think we're in this weird effect of that kind of what you brought up with the time slot of we're in recovery mode now in COVID. Like, things are starting to open up, things are going to get great. I dude, houses are going up like so. I'm I'm housing values are insane. Fucking hell, dude. So <laughs> me me and me and Alyssa now are, are thinking like, okay, if she, if she doesn't go back for a PhD, um, then we're we're gonna stay here and she's gonna keep teaching and we're we maybe we'll buy a house. The fucking values are going up like fifty grand a month of like any house. Like you see, house going for like six hundred thousand dollars this month. Next month it's gonna be going for like six hundred fifty thousand dollars. Like it's like values are like climbing really really fast right now because like economy is opening back up. People are getting jobs again, and for some reason the housing market thinks ah perfect <laughs> time to uh time to just start raking in money. Yeah, uh, things are irrational right now. Very very irrational. We we went through this weird stimulus. People think it's fine. Um. Just putting it out there, it's not going to be like that forever. Mm. Um, and it just kind of ties into everything we just talked about here. Put all your money in Dogecoin. <laughs> uh, absolutely not. Uh, do not listen to that. And we are not financial experts. It's, it's just, <laughs> can I bring up real quick, a quick oh, quick aside here. Can I just bring up the fact that if you had listened to me when I first brought up Dogecoin, I, you would be you would make so much money. You would have made so much money. Man, you should might as well just open a clubhouse at this point and talk about uh, crypto trading, man. Now well, I might I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a Dogecoin uh, a bot that just um, sells it, it buys Doge the minute Elon Musk tweets anything that has the word Doge in it, it it buys it for me automatically and then dumps it when I hit twenty percent. Because th- have you any time he tweets about it, it goes up like thirty percent. Yeah, that's no, ridiculous. It's uh, stupid. But yeah, I mean, kind of tying it all those points. And uh, definitely, if you're interested in uh, blockchain and these kinds of things, uh, listen to the previous podcast where there's actual experts talking about the world of cryptocurrency. The fact that I wasn't a part of that conversation is really... Oh, uh, you were banned for a reason. I was banned. I was literally... <laughs> I want the audience to know that I literally was not allowed to be a part of that conversation because I would have been the bad boy of the group and be like, blockchain's I dumb. I yeah, I didn't even I know, know about it. Damn it, Heidi. <laughs> um, but yeah. broken. But... To end it off for today, um, social media is changing. Obviously, that's one thing we brought up in the beginning. Yeah. Keep watching what's happening with Amazon. Like, don't just like wash it off. Like, this is an important piece of yeah, where US history is going to go. So definitely watch what's going on there. We'll we'll probably talk a little bit more once we hear more about what's kind of going on there. Yeah. And what that really means because all these things impact you. You should be talking about these things with other people that actually might have other opinions from you. And I think that's also very healthy. Um, that's also the main idea of this podcast is really talk with as many people as possible and you don't have to agree with everything but at least hear them out because if you're in your own yeah. bubble it's a little 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 scary world out there if you're no yeah i mean you, that's you that... go into the into the storm the the q and on uh yeah world uh yeah, yeah yeah watch that documentary on hbo max it's fantastic yeah that that is definitely the tricky part for me it's like i feel like i've cultivated at least on like twitter and stuff like that i've cultivated this like beautiful bubble of just like I, i'll just be like like uh What's like a like a I uh, something I, I I would tweet I don't know like Jeff Bezos is a ghoul and then like people will be like hell yeah dude like 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 retweet 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 and it's just but like I I want someone to like 
come at me with just like Jeff Bezos isn't a ghoul because of this reason. Because then I, I at least I can have like a conversation with him about it. But like the only the only person that you can you can at in your tweets or reply to in a tweet and like people will go at you is Elon Musk. Have you like the Musk heads? <laughs> um, like I, if you if if Elon Musk tweets and under his tweet you put you're dumb, <laughs> just like you are, and then dumb. So I guaranteed within five minutes you'll get a reply that's just like. Uh, that, that is just like he's the smartest man in the world exactly that is just like he's he's he landed of uh, uh, something on the moon like he's what like, did you do yeah exactly like well who who are you um for some reason man elon musk just just does has people at his beck and will i don't know i don't know it's strange he, he went against a quota and he, he won so i mean I, I i i will applaud him for that i i think he does a lot of stuff that does piss me off but uh, aside from that uh, oh no I'm ne- I've, I've gone to the point now i'm never buying a tesla well, I'm, I'm for sure buying a Tesla. There's so that many the first, options. That, uh, I don't so care. many options. I, it, it, it'll be a Tesla. So many options now. Uh, I'll make fun of you. One of my friends just got a Tesla. Um, See, and... he, he's, he's trying to get the Android of cars. I'll make oh, the God. iOS of cars. <laughs> I, I, here, all right. Um, I, uh, if it's See, full circle. The world goes full circle. No, man. look. Right now, if, if I was in the market for a brand new car, like I'd be pretty hard pressed to find an electric vehicle that was better than a Tesla, than like a Model 3 or, or a Model S. Um, but I think in like three years when like I'm looking for a new car, I think by then there's going to be some pretty sweet competitors, whether it's like Audi, Volkswagen's ID4 is garbage. I like Audi. Audi would be pretty, pretty nice. Exactly. I, I, I'll, I'll be okay with okay, that. Okay, there you go. I'll, I'll, there you okay, go. We'll, we'll talk at the yeah, three years from now know, once we can actually afford lives. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, you have Audi, <laughs> Volkswagen, Ford, which like is cool. Um a Toyota, but like I don't know, I, I'm 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 slowly becoming this like version of myself that's just like I only support small business and I want to buy American. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I, I'm I am both I am both the proudest patriot and also like the most staunch like critic of the United States at the exact same time. Like I I don't that, have hey, Amazon. That's do. how you actually are a patriot. You should never take things as that is the best. That I is. don't I don't use Amazon anymore. I don't. I'm that's one of the proudest things that I can say. I all my books are from small local indie places. I go out and I buy other knickknacks and patty wax from like smaller mom and pop shops. It's more expensive and it's fucking annoying that it is. Um because I, I still I have the app. So like I'll like like recently I me and my wife, like every six months we get like a big book haul, right? And we just we, we read these books. But I'll I'll, I'll ask in a question. I'll ask in a second. Oh shit. Um uh, we have these big book hauls and like we we re- we got like ten books the other day and we ended up uh Cellador Books in Riverside, by the way. Shout out Cellador Books. Go get your books from there. Um uh they're fantastic. Um they're literally the mother and daughter and mother and son, excuse me, run the damn thing. They have the employees. They're fantastic. Um, uh, but we ended up paying like, I think total with all the books we got was like $300. Ooh, 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 damn. We were paying MSRP. Um, we ended up paying like 300 and like 20 bucks for, for books. Um, uh, and like, it hurts when you pay that much for books, you know, it's like, oh, all hey, right. Book is never a bad investment though. But then I look it up on Amazon for the total amount. We would it would only would have cost us like 120 bucks on Amazon for all the same books we got, and it's just like fuck you, Amazon. It's like what are you doing? Like how are you doing this? Like this is why these small businesses are going under. It's like, like if if I was just interested in just in in the monetary side of it and not helping a small business, I wouldn't. I would just go Amazon 100. Mm-hmm. percent Um, but it's hard, man. Like going from like Amazon, like for everything, books, every little thing, um, to not using it. I haven't I haven't used Amazon in. in I think the beginning of this year, I made it my my mission for this year to not use Amazon. Only time I used it was uh, for Nikhil for his birthday because I didn't want to like ship a book myself physically. Yeah. So I bought him a book on Amazon and I shipped it directly to his house um, as a gift. Um, but I can't think of any other thing besides that. Am I saying I'm better than like everyone? Probably, but like it's <laughs> <laughs> but like you know it's hard. It sucks. <laughs> Jeez, man. All right. You had a question for me? Yeah, how many? Uh, how many? So you should be done with six books. <laughs> how many Doctor Seuss books have you read? Hey, uh, Andrew, how many books have you read? Do you really want to know? Don't worry, you're, no, you're asking, the, you're asking the anomaly. How, how many books have you read? 20. Right All right, so thank me, you. 17? So, so out of those 17 I'm books, six. he I'm covered six. six of mine. So uh, you read no. 11 books this end. I read a... <laughs> okay. I read, uh, okay. Just, just give me this mark and I'll was a light month for me just because I got busy. Seven, <laughs> 17 books, dude. 17, I, dude. I opened How like many pages did you read a day? Like 100? That's all I did. <laughs> but like, are you, are you reading like 100 pages a day? Plus. Typically? Plus. 
Plus. Jesus, man. What yeah. the hell? I've, in the morning, 20 in the evening, then whatever night, I, I just... <laughs> I, I've been getting like 60 pages in a day, but that's like me at the gym. I, I, I dedicate 30 minutes of my gym time to just like walking on a treadmill with like the highest incline and just like reading. Um, and then, uh, and then when I go home before I go to bed, I'll, 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 I'll read then too. Um, you should probably get some glasses. You should probably get some glasses. If, it's, it's, it's if Texas, they're getting, getting blurry, man, that, that's you need some glasses. Yeah, now I can't even look at these words. I'm just blazing through it. Are you? Are you? A, do you finger the book? Uh, depends. Depends on the book. All right, so we're uh, we're gonna close out for today's show. <laughs> we're closing out on do you finger the book? Yeah, that's, we're, we're gonna, <laughs> all right. <laughs> we will close out on that for today Make before. <laughs> There's there's plenty of sound bites in here that's gonna get us in plenty of trouble. So we'll uh we'll close out for today's show before I will I... die on that hill. Reagan is a fucking ghoul. Oh. If you like Ronald <laughs> Ronald Reagan, you were you were also a ghoul. I will uh, die on that hill. Jeez, man. All right. Well, I'm happy to have anybody who loves Reagan on this podcast. Oh, I'll get them on here, but I'll call them a ghoul <laughs> to their face. <laughs> Jesus, man. Um, this is an open environment to have open conversations. No, man. I not it's to, it's welcoming, but I'll be like, how, but I'd say it nicer. I'd be like, so I hear you like Reagan. How does it feel to be a ghoul? I'm going to end the show personally. <laughs> okay. I know. Right. We're, we're, we're going to close right. it out we're, for today. We're, we're ranting. But I, I, I appreciate for anybody who tuned in and listened to our, our closing out rambles. And the answer to how many books I've read is zero, but I've opened good PDFs and, and understand hey, documents. I thought you said you read the dip. Well, that was that was last month. Like last month, I hit three. So this month, I haven't hit any, I haven't hit any this month. That was last month. Okay. So you have three books. No, this entire year? Yeah. We, we should, I should have nine because it's three, it's three months already. No, you should we're have in April. It's two books. We're in April. It's four. The, by the end of this month, you should have eight. Oh, it's two books it's a month? D- it's two books a month. How many books do you think we're supposed to be reading? No, I think I'm good. I, no, no, I'm not good. I, I think I'm, I'm not. You're like, not as five. far back as you think. I'm not as bad. I'm not terrible. I can actually catch up. Holy crap. You're five All books? Right, we're closing out. We're okay. closing out for today's show. Appreciate you tuning in. Uh, definitely, I mean, our, uh, we're going to throw all the links into the description. Follow yeah. us and everything else. We'll have some good sound clips that we're going to be posting out of this episode. Uh, but definitely tune in as we're going to get uh, other guests. So it's not just me and Luis yelling at each other for an hour straight. Yeah, if, if you if you legitimately, <laughs> dude, I would love that. Actually, I would I I would pay somebody twenty dollars. I pay someone a hundred dollars. If you're like a legitimate Reaganite, I would pay you a hundred dollars to come on this podcast and tell me why Reagan is good. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna clip this. I'm gonna put an ad out to anybody and everybody. All right. We are fading out. Thank Bye you everyone. for tuning in. <laughs>